The Supreme Court agreed to decide whether one of the men convicted of the Washington, D.C. area sniper attacks can appeal his life sentence. Lee Boyd Malvo was just 17 when he accompanied John Allen Mohammed on a killing spree that left 10 people dead back in 2002. Since then, sentencing guidelines for juveniles have changed, but for those behind bars, few options remain. 48 Hours correspondent Aaron Moriarty spoke to an inmate in Missouri who claims he too was given an excessive sentence when he was young. Aaron joins us at the table. Good morning. Good morning. We're talking about the sentencing of young people. Now, this story is not about the wrongfully convicted. Patrick Flaherty did commit the crimes for which he was convicted, but he makes the case that he received an unusually long sentence and that he and others just like him deserve a second chance. When I look at my life and I think I'm 42 years old, my life is defined by a mistake I made 20 years ago. And it doesn't matter what I do, that's the reality of the situation. Patrick Flaherty has spent nearly half his life in prison with an equally long stretch still ahead of him. You could spend another 20 years here. I could spend another 20 here. I could do another 20 doing the things I've been doing, you know, the classes, the college degrees, the charity projects, and I could spend another 20 here getting in trouble. Then I would go for parole on the same day. On July 23rd, 1999, at this convenience store. He waited until 3 a.m., grabbed the BB gun that he says he bought at Walmart, covered his face, and then walked in. It's a BB gun, but it looks like the real thing, doesn't it? Yes, ma'am. I never had any intentions of hurting anyone, so I thought that that would probably be the best thing for me to utilize. He got away with $128, and then two months later, robbed a second convenience store. This time you got $89. Yes, ma'am. I mean, you could have had a minimum wage job and made more money than that. Yes, ma'am. Flaherty committed two more robberies before he was finally caught. He was charged with four counts of first-degree armed robbery, and although the only weapon was that BB gun, he was also charged for carrying a dangerous instrument. How would you describe Patrick Flaherty back then? He was a kid. Rick Sindel was Flaherty's attorney. He was, a, you know, kind of a young man without a lot of clues. Flaherty took a plea, hoping for mercy. Instead, the judge gave him 10 years for each of the robberies, and then she ordered the sentences to run consecutively. And you hear the word consecutive, 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 and you start thinking in your mind, my God, that's, that's 40 years. Flaherty has to serve 85 percent of his sentence before he's eligible for parole when he's 57 years old. When they took me back to my cell, they came in, handcuffed me to the bench. And when I asked them, you know, what are you doing? They told me, oh, we're putting you on mandatory suicide watch because of your sentence. I think it's excessive. Retired St. Louis Circuit Court Judge Evelyn Baker believes Flaherty got that sentence because the robberies occurred in a county where judges are elected and need to take a tough stance on criminals, regardless of their age. We have way too many youngsters incarcerated throughout this country. Judge Baker knows about the harm of excessive sentencing. In 1997, she sentenced a teenager, Bobby Bostick, to 241 years in prison after he committed two armed robberies around Christmas, and one of the victims was grazed by a bullet. I started regretting that sentence many years later when the studies started coming out in terms of brain development. We really should not be treating children like adults because they're not. Their brains are still farming. But there is no legal mechanism to undo that sentence. Bostick remains in prison, as does Patrick Flaherty, who has in the past two decades earned an undergraduate college degree and is working on his uh, master's. And what we have here is a temperature scale. He creates math books for the blind after becoming certified in Braille transcription. He has petitioned the Missouri governor to take a new look at his case, but he fears the good he has done cannot outweigh the pain he caused. I know in a perfect world that uh, 
I should probably say that the emotional harm I caused my victims is, is what hurts me the most, but it's the hurt I caused my mom, without a doubt. The judge who sentenced Flaherty wouldn't discuss his case with us, but one of his victims, a store clerk, did. She says she doesn't feel much sympathy for Flaherty because she still remembers the terror of having a gun pointed at her. But then consider this. Had Flaherty shot one of his victims, gone in with a real gun and shot her, and received a life sentence, he'd likely be out of prison earlier. So it doesn't oh, make a, a lot of sense. It doesn't make any right. sense. It's one of those things when you're a kid and they tell you, let the punishment fit the crime. In both those cases, it seems excessive. So what options does Flaherty have? He seems to have redeemed himself. Yeah, he really only has one option, and that's going to the governor in a state like Missouri, a very conservative state. And the governor could commute the sentence, but what's the upside? I mean, that's a really the long odds against that, because what's the upside of supporting a convicted criminal? But the other point here is how much money we are spending, right. particularly in the state of Missouri, to keep him in for those 40 years. Do you over know the number? Dollars, over, over a million, million dollars. dollars. Yeah. And what's Bostick doing? We see what Flaherty's doing. What's he doing? Um, he's written poetry. He's mm -hmm. taking college classes. He, too, I would say, is really on the way of rehabilitating himself. It's great the judge is speaking out, too. Yeah. So I, I thought very to brave of her. I do, too. Very brave. Interesting story, Erin. Thank you. Thank you.